Alright, here we Don't go. Favorite stage three is Caden Groves. Keep your eye on this man. He is very, very strong. This is a super short course, very technical, big fat, 924 meters, I believe. Hey, anyway, Caden Groves is in this weird blue mission Scott kit. Other only other bloke in that kit is Turbo Durbo, but he's huge. So you can you'll be able to spot Caden Groves. Got huge calves, very stereotypical as a sprinter. And we'll just show you the first lap. Make sure everyone knows what's going on. Technical. Not too many places to move up. Finishing straight is a good place to move up, and this one's not too bad either. But basically, these blokes, they are back. I think they're the Oliver Racing team. They're getting spat pretty much. Well, maybe not, but you know what I mean. Like, if you're at the back, it's not going to be good for you. Um, so anyway, straight away, this bloke goes on the uh, goes on the attack. And um, if you're not sure what the Bay Crits is, it's like an Omnium race um, for Crits. And Sam Wellsford, who's like, I think man won for the Aussie Team Pursuit squad. He's probably going to win gold this uh, summer in the Olympics. Um, and he's winning it. Anyway, so his team, I don't know what it is. I think it's the Lexus Backbone team. They're in black. They're patrolling. Basically, they want someone to go up the road, make it hard, but make sure that, you know, because if it comes down to a sprint, they, he could lose the overall. He, so Sam Wellswood is in the overall. Didn't explain that too well. Uh, and Brenton Jones, who's racing Canyon DHB, presented by Serene. Um, he's he's racing, and there's a couple of other, a couple other blokes who are racing who could could get it off him, I think Caden Groves um, is can't, and Michael Freeberg, Australian national champion, there he is, just going past, in that sort of blue kit, classic yellow Orica, um, Scott Helmets, so that's the lap, very quick, very quick, but anyway, watch that there, you see for Freeberg, followed by two Michigan Scott blokes, rerun if you need to, but you'll see them go around this corner, Freeberg then attacks, you can see just at the end of that corner, he's attacks, and when they show the next bit, you'll see Freeberg's off the front here, Durbo's trying to get it back, but look at Caden Groves, he goes first into that corner, Leaves a gap, Durbo doesn't corner very fast, lets the teammate go, and that's it. That's the race. Cheerio, Freeberg and Kane Groves. Um, and, you know, people are happy for that. I think, you know, they try, try to chase back. So you can see Caden Groves taking a drink, very technical crit. Freeberg, former Australian, well, he is the Australian national champion. We'll find out tomorrow uh, who is going to be the next one. My money's on Chris Harper, so as Lantern Rouge and some other people I know. Uh, but, yeah, so that's it pretty much. Uh, 410 normalised. I think it was um, the thing, the uh, the half an hour they were off the front there, and they're lap the field. So Lexus Blackburn are chasing, but I don't know how hard they're chasing. But anyway, these boys are strong. He used to race Kane Groves Race at Seg Racing Academy. Don't know them. They brought you Fago, Jakobsen, and everyone pretty much. They're like if you go to them, you know, you you pretty much five of them get World Tour spots every single year. So you can you know he's a class rider if he's getting selected for that. And Mission Scott obviously picked him up, and um, he's looking like a top top sprinter. So that. Is pretty much Lexus Blackburn still chasing, but you know, see the yellow jersey there. But they've got a decent team, like four people, but it's not really gonna it's not really gonna happen for them today. Uh Caden Groves are strong, same with Freeburg, and they the thing is they seem to want to protect too many people for the lead out. Um but anyway, they're gonna weren't gonna win. But you can see aggressive cornering by both. They know how to ride a bike, both of them. Um Caden Groves is a lot smaller, you can see gets in the aero position, big cast, classic sort of sprinter, small sprinter, very muscularly. Um, while Freeburg's more of a classic ruler type of bloke, tall, lanky, but uh Again, good on a bike. Like this is technical. This is this is what I mean when I like to say a technical crit. Not those stupid American. I, I, people get really annoyed when I call it American crits aren't technical, but like I mean, okay, maybe one or two are. Some of those intelligence Jensen cops, they look decently technical from um, what's his face, Jeff bloke. Um, but yeah, most of them not too technical. Well, yeah, anyway, they're off the front, but here you go. They call back up, so we skip 15 minutes, and um, <laughs> to be honest, nothing much happened. They just rolled round, rolled round, rolled round, and now they're off the front. Um, and now they were off the front, now they're off the back, and they're about to join on. So anyway, basically, they this is it, the final lap. So they they pulled them after three laps to go. They were allowed on out. And um, you'll see around this corner, I mean, Freebug knows he's going to lose. Um, you know, maybe if it's three people, Freebug might be able to get away, but it's two people. He's just going to mark him. He sits on, Freebug's going to lead it out, goes around this corner pretty early. Um, sorry, it's the next corner's the thing. I mean, you know, they're going 20k an hour. They're not going to get caught, 30k an hour. Um, but yeah, Caden Groves does some huge numbers. We're going to get into his Strava Strava file in a minute uh but yeah who do you think is going to win that's obviously me Caden Groves I've already spoiled that because I wouldn't make a video about someone's going to come second um but yeah really impressed me this ride like he's a young lad yeah he came 11th in one of the stages in Tor Guangxi okay it's world tour but it's not top top world tour but you know fair enough and here you go 1600 watts cheerio son cheerio like just stops pedaling as well round again and then he's like you know what let's do another 1600 watts and another 1600 watts he does and um yeah it's it's pretty good from him you know it's like pretty obvious he's gonna win and fair play to Caden gross um we're gonna see him tour down under so i'm pretty excited but let's get into his power farm and let's get into some results and see what the man himself has done
Here we are, this is Caden Groves' Strava, Par Strava Power File for Stage 3 of the Bakerets. So this is the whole race, an hour at 400 normalised, very nice. Strava Source is how you get it, it's top app, download, you're missing out. Technical crits, we can see a lot of surge, a lot of surge. But anyway, you can look at the heart rate, this is when heart rate comes in use. So you can see from this part to this part, he's very elevated, um, and that's when he was when he was breaking away. So you can see it's like 414 for 39 minutes, normalised. Very, very nice. Uh, very nice indeed. Um, but it, it gets does get a bit more juicy at some points. I believe we... Uh, we do get we do get four thirty for half an hour. I've have I've have heard this could be three bugs, but anyway, four hundred twenty two watts there. You've been normalized like that's solid, and like he averaged forty four and a half kilometers an hour around like a pretty technical crit. You know, maybe four cornered, but it was technical to say, to say the least. And anyway, we'll go to the sprint. This is where it most impressed me. So he sixteen hundred watts around the corner, and as Jeff, the bloke I was saying before, can never remember what his thing is. Change his name, it's like, what well, he's a California cyclist, something stupid. And if you change his name, it'll be class. And he does 1600 watts into the corner, takes the corner 60k an hour, and then hits like 1500 watts on the exit of the corner. And uh, yeah, dust, dust Freeburg off, and Freeburg's a big boy. We'll give him some kudos, give him kudos. Love the man, love the man. Um, BA rode there and back, three, 360 normalized for an hour and 40 minutes. That's pretty. Pretty solid. He's, you know, he's not heavy. Um, he's not light, but he's not like you know, eighty-five kilo big boy sprinter. So seventy-five kilos, very nice. But anyway, we'll get we'll get on we'll get on to his results. So that's my other video uploading. We're doing multiple videos. One men's juniors, very nice, very nice. Uh, then did some UCI races. I think this is for this George Continental team. Uh, again, nineteenth in the under twenty-three road race, and I'm um, I'm pretty sure Australia never changed their road race. So it'll be the same one, which is stupid. But you know, Australia's Australia; they didn't like to change things apparently. Uh, but yeah, second in a prologue in a two point two. That's all right. Again, ninth in a two point one. I'm guessing it's a sprint sprinty boy, and it, indeed it was. But you know, it's not bad, is it? When you're like how old were you? Was like just turned under twenty-three. First year under twenty-three, I believe it would have been. So yeah, he's nineteen. Um, top ten in two point one. That is very nice. Oh wait, no, he actually won a 2.1. That's very nice. And a third. Um, so you know, like he got results early on. Um, and you might be like, well, who are these people? But like Asian 2.1s are not not easy. Not easy at all. And that's a hilly stage as well. Like, well, actually not too bad. It's only gets the 440. But you know, still good results from the man. And you can see he's doing more Asia tour stuff, does Lavanier, which is always good. But anyway, we'll start. So didn't do the didn't do any national champs. Um Langkawi seventh. That's a card race as the HC. Um, so the different categories, basically, it's like two or one. So two stage race, one is normal. Uh, it's a one-day race. And then it goes from point one, which is like club races can do it. And Conti teams, uh, I don't think Pro Conti can. Two Pro Conti teams, Conti teams, and World Tour teams. No, but no World Tour teams. Sorry. One World Tour teams, Conti teams, and Pro Conti. And then, obviously, HC is just change the ratio. And then World Tour is obviously World Tour and Pro Conti only. But anyway, Andre Guandini, he's a solid bloke. Mexep Debesse, it's not bad. Caden Groves. Top, top seven. Good, good, good lad, good lad. Um, so you know, it's looking good for the boy. It's looking good. Um, got second on that prologue again. Um, which is nice. Talk King Shai Lake again. That's another HC. It's not as hard. Not normally a world tour team go, but you can see like William Sala Italia there. They they would have raced uh, Giro. Brendan Jones again is is a pretty solid sprinter. Uh, Tour de Lavenir like didn't get mega results to be honest. Um, you know, like none of them. I think Matt Gibson won one of these early ones, or Matt, yeah, like Matt Gibson was up there, Jake Stewart. Um, like those are the sort of sprinters he's going against. So obviously, like he didn't, he didn't perform in Tour Lavenir, that's for sure. And like on this one again, you wouldn't have seen like Rob Standard. He's pretty strong, but like yeah, there's not Tour Lavenir sprints is like mm, it's a bit iffy because like not many people really want to commit. They just want GC. Uh, but Tour Chani won the points classification, didn't win a stage, but you know top three is like two point one. That's again decent. Quang Shao Bay. Um, won the first stage like that again. That's a decent race. Canyon DHB normally doing it in Tour of Fuzhou. That's like the, the closing one for the Asian Tour. Uh, again, won a stage second by like, all pretty solid results. So like, nothing like that's going to go mental. But then 2019, he um really stepped up significantly. Um, and he raced a lot more in Europe. He joined Seg Racing Academy. So I think before he was always on Mission Bike Exchange, which is a Conti team, but it's basically like Asian Conti team. So they don't race any of Europe, which I think is a bit weird. But I think it's because like. The Michigan people just like know that Asia Tour is hard enough, so if they can do all right there, get a couple of good results in Europe, they should be all right. But anyway, 2019, he raced at Racing Academy, probably best decision he made. Went to Europe, started picking up results. One in the two two stages in the under 20, 
Three race. So if it has U, that means it's under 23. If it's J, it's a junior. These are the UCI classifications. Again, one. Like the thing is, the circuit to Ardennes, like people are going to know that. Like I've heard of that, you know, but like the Asia Tour, like I've heard of it, but not that many. Like World Tour people will have respect it as much. But like winning two stages here, like that's going to be so much more than winning like four stages in Asian 2.2. Um, the Asian Bass on the Asian, like that's pretty good, isn't it? He's a heavy boy, 75 gears. We can get around that. Eshpon Frankfurt, obviously, that's for sprinters. Another 1.2 in the Netherlands, like, you know, he beat beat some decent blokes here. Niels Ekhoff, we all know him. Disqualified from 23 worlds. But, like, you know, he's this is the thing. He moved to Europe, got the results. Ronde Lizard, that is the classic um, under-23 race. Beat Kovi, who's a, a sign for someone. I can't remember who it is, but, yeah, signed. Um, uh, like, again, so a lot of these people you wouldn't have heard just because sprinters don't hear as much about in GC, um, in under-23 compared to GC riders, but... Like, Ronde Lizard is a really, really um, well-known under-23 race. Parry Bay, not great result, but not bad. And then Giro, Giro came second on the prologue, third there, DNF. But, like, again, Tour of Alsace, Hilly race. Um, again, another classic sort of under-23 race. Tour de Lavenir, this year he came eighth, seventh, second. That's that's good. Like, second in a Tour de Lavenir stage is is what you need. Um, and, you know, it's, he seems to be good on the Hilly stuff as well, which is was promising. So maybe for... Um, Australian national champs, he could do all right. Brussels Cycling Classic. I mean, that's a HC, and that's not bad, is it? That's not bad at all. Like, he's been Kokar, nice, and okay, not Laporte. Like, he's Greipel, world champ, <laughs> Brad Spencer. Like, that's like obviously he was on a stagiaire then, but like, that's still pretty mega. And then, like, some of these other ones, 14th in the under 23 worlds. And then Guangxi got 11th, which is World Tour Race, which is pretty solid. So, all in all, Top season for the bloke. I think he's going to go very, very well um, this year. He's already raced in Europe. He's got good results. You know, I'm not expecting him to win a, you know, a hard World Tour race or HC race necessarily in Europe, but I expect him to get a lot of top tens. And um, I think he'll, you know, he won't ever lead that train, but, you know, he should do well. Um, but anyway, these are my thoughts for the future. Big Caden King Gross. Love the man. Seems like a top bloke. Um, and yeah, so anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you did enjoy. And um. Yeah, we'll get some Tour Down Under footage, a bit of San Juan, and a bit of Bolt, uh, Vuelta Colombia, or 2.1 Colombia, whatever it's called. It changes every year. Um, but anyway, it's going to be good. And uh, yeah, we'll try and make some videos. I've got exams, so it's not ideal, so I'm slaving away on the revision front. But when I can make a video, we'll try and do it. So anyway, cheers for watching, I'll see you in the next one.